Hey guys, so um, I think this is the first time I'm going to be doing something like this. Um, we're going to be watching this. So this came out four years ago. Um, at least the re-upload was. I don't know how long the, uh, the actual one was, but uh, yeah. So a few years ago, TC or Magic allowed in editor well of course first you need a table no shit yeah. <laughs> so first off yeah you do need a table um that's commonplace um but on one side i don't get why he keeps getting clowned on for this um but on the other uh, um yeah, you could have just reset this to you need a hardworking surface, not a, not a table. Like, of course you need a table, but you know you could work it on a hardwood floor, concrete floor, whatever. Preferably not metal. If it's gonna be metal, have an anti-static working surface layered on top of it. It's got a point there. A thermal paste applicator. Okay, that's a thermal paste applicator. I've. Never really heard of that. I mean, I've seen it, but I wouldn't say people use it. Um, mainly because when you put the like the fan, if you if you use one of the fans, or you use a radiator thing, um, genuinely the the paste, the the thermal paste gets spread um, when you ply that on. It'll like spread if you put like a dot, it'll spread in like a circle form, and that's all you need. Um, you don't really need a, a, a application thingy or whatever this is. Later, an Allen wrench. You don't need an Allen wrench. Just gonna put that out. You don't need an Allen wrench. And some tweezers to tie up the wires. The, those are zip ties. A Swiss Army knife, which, which hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver. Hopefully. Hopefully. Maybe you should, like, not do that and you should just buy one. Like, I bet you can get one for like one dollar somewhere. We're in it. And last but not least, an anti-static bracelet. That's not an anti-static bracelet. Um, mainly because where's the string? Where's the wire to that? That's that's a that's a We Rock Jesus bracelet or whatever. Which is so you unbox you, them, isolate them. You didn't need to destroy it. You had the knife. Just just cut it open and slide it open. You, you didn't need to destroy it parts that you're building by adding the motherboard in oh by the way he didn't tell you that you need to place these things into the case and these things for the motherboard he never told you that but you're gonna have to learn that on your own i guess that's not important i guess some notes about installing motherboards they're really delicate you should be really careful with them um hold on i'm gonna let him continue hold on. and screw in with confidence but also don't screw in too hard otherwise you could crack the board uh, <laughs> okay he's, he's right on the two first things uh, the third thing don't s screw in with confidence. I like his style for that. I'll give him some style points for saying that. But he's got a point, though. You don't screw in too hard. If you just, if you screw in too hard, you could actually damage it. So not really much to say. Just I don't understand why you said screw in with confidence. Doesn't really. I don't get that. But hey, I'm not you. You know, maybe maybe you know more than me. I chose Asus Z37. Asus Z? You mean Asus? Asus. There's no E at the end zero motherboard for two main reasons one it has built-in wi-fi and bluetooth don't get a motherboard just for that get a motherboard that's actually really good not just because wi-fi and crap and also you can get really fast ssds that are really easy to install pay close attention to the brace the brace you mean the shield the io shield that goes at the back of the computer you always have to make sure that you really hammer it in don't hammer it in don't 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 do that please please don't man because there's no screw it really just has to go outside of the case and clasp onto the frame and this is very important because otherwise you can't align the motherboard correctly with the holes on the motherboard okay. i chose corsair's 16 gigabyte vengeance led ram Fair for enough. two main reasons one it has leds and we do like lights in our gaming desktops fair enough secondly uh it's pretty fast ram it's 2666 megahertz that's not fast man that's that's not fast that's fast for ddr3 but ddr4 that's really slow 
Now, if you would get 3,200, that would be fast. Well, that'd be like the medium, but you get my point. I believe, so it's pretty fast, and this motherboard supports that speed, which is most... I mean, it's fast if you play, like, old games, which, yeah, I can see that. You know, that's fair enough, but not really. Important. Open the slots. Okay, you don't need to open all of them. You just need to open two. First, and just aligning the... Well, okay, you can open all of them if you have four, but he just has two, so you just need to open two. Stick. Yo, hold up. Hold up. What is that? You put, so there's four slots, and how dual dual channel works is there needs to be a space in between. There needs to be one space in between. So like, say there there's four slots, right? You could put it one and three, on slot one and three, or four and two. You don't put them on two and three because that doesn't allow for the dual channel to work, and your computer's not going to be running as fast install the hard drive, or in this case, the NVMe SSD. I chose this format of solid state drive so that I could input it into the motherboard without having to worry about extra wires or putting it in a separate part of the case and just getting really messy. Fair enough, that's that's a fair point, that's a good point. I mean, you can always upgrade it and get like a SSD, you know, a bigger one um, that has more space, you know, but that's a fair point. We're going to install the graphics card. Let's go! I chose PNY's GTX 1080. Okay. Um, let's see, four years ago, four years ago, okay, let's do a little bit of research. When did the 20 series come out? 2018, okay, so it's 2022, four years ago, would have been 2018. You, you could have, you, you could have, you could have gotten that. Though, you know, I'll give him a slide, I'll give him a slide, you know, maybe this wasn't here at the time, maybe it was before September, so... I'll give him a slide on that. Which is overclocked. And so it's a pretty easy installation. You're just going to find the gold connectors. Yep. And you're going to line this bracket with the back end bracket of your PC case. Okay, he didn't teach you that you actually need to... Hold on. And you're going to line this bracket with the back end bracket. He didn't teach you that you actually need to like unlock that. Okay, so some cases have that where you need to unlock it. And then you need to take the PCI slots out he didn't teach you that but you need to do that before you install your case or your uh, gpu into your case packet of your pc case now which lane you choose depends entirely on what other parts you're going to put in the system not true uh first slot has fire uh faster um faster speeds than the other uh one or two whatever kind of slots you have depending on the motherboard you know sometimes you do the atx has like three um, you know, stuff like that. So first slot you would definitely go to. Take your remaining brackets and just put them in the spots. Oh, so now he teaches you. He teaches you to put it back, but he doesn't teach you to take it out. Okay, fair. Back in bracket. And your GPU is installed. Power supply time. I... Okay, so before I play this, this one has been heavily criticized for this point. The power supply one is very, very criticized for this. So we'll see. Chose Corsair's 850 watt power supply because I need enough headroom for ray tracing GPUs when they come out, and I don't want to have to upgrade it again. That's a fair point. I mean, I'm the power supply I'm looking at is a 1300 power supply, 1300 watts. That way I can get like a 3090, and then if the 40 when the 40 well the 40 series is already out, but um, I think it is. But like when it's fully out and everything, then I could just upgrade to that with no problem. So all you have to do is take the brick and make sure that you align it with these little insulating pads so that the power supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the Okay, that isn't, that's not how it works. Um, first off, power supplies are grounded. Um, so even if it were to come in contact with the metal, it wouldn't explode. Um, and uh, yeah, hold on, give me a second. All right, where was I? Oh yeah. So yeah, it doesn't matter if it comes in contact. Power supplies are grounded, so even if it were to come in contact with the metal, it'd be fine. System. So just take it in, slide it in nice and easy until you have a snug fit. Okay. You placed it in wrong, man. Um, I'm not going to get overly angry because I saw a lot of people freaking this out. Like, Whoa! but just to put it simply and shortly, uh, first off, you want the fan pointing, you know, I don't know why I pointed, like, you could see what I'm doing. But you want the fan to where this side is, so it can get air and everything. Um, with the fan painting, pointing that way, um, it will not last as long because it will overheat. All the CPU core. In this case, it's going to... 
Okay, fair enough. I'm gonna go on the top end of the case, and we're just gonna have the hose hang out for a little while until we install the processor, which is... Um... Okay, uh... To... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of correct him on this. Uh, what you should have done, really quickly, is you should have put the RAM, you should have put the CPU in the motherboard first. That's the first thing you should have done. Put everything on the motherboard that you can, such as RAM, CPU, etc. Then what you want to do is put the CPU, uh, put the motherboard into the, and then you would want to install the radiator. Um, and then that way it doesn't have to drag on the thing, it doesn't have to drag on the table, um, and possibly damage it. It's gonna come a little later. Always be sure to try- Where are the fans? Where- where- hold on. I too- Where- where are the fans? You're supposed to- So, okay. With the- Alright, sorry about that. Uh, oh my god, my dog's going crazy now. Okay, so, what you wanna do is there's long screws and short screws that come with this. You wanna install the long screws first so it can get through the radiator and everything. Don't tighten it too much because that'll damage the radiator. Then you would use the short screws to install into here. Simple as that, right? Now let's see what this guy does. Place it in the system first before you install it, because you can see it takes up a lot of space. Well, it depends on the thickness. Some are skinny, some are thick. Really depends on the brand, really. But in this also, you should not have taken case. The, the the plastic cover off, because that if you're going to do this, you should have protected it at least. No pun intended. It fits in perfectly. And we're gonna start screwing it in. And so there's nothing special about this screwing in process. They're just really long screws because they go through the entire frame of the cooler. Yeah, it's supposed to also go through the fan too. That's why they're long. Um, yeah, and they take forever. So next up, cables. Every power supply is gonna come with a big bag of Velcro cable. Not every power supply. Not every power supply is going to do that. Some power supplies are already installed. Some power supplies do this. And then, if I remember correctly, some don't. You'd have to buy the buy the, 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 the stuff separately, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that. We're installing the CPU. The heart of the computer or the brain, depending on how you look at it. Should have done that the first step. But, hey, I'm not a genius, I guess. I'm not mastermind. So to do this, we're just mega mine. Sorry. It's going to remove the plastic covering that they put on the motherboard. We're just going to take this little plastic part out. We'll just toss that out of here. No, no. You don't toss that. You keep it because if you have a problem, you need that shield. It's so. motherboard manufacturers require that if you're if you have a damage or anything wrong they require you to have that in order to return it and we're going to use the cpu applicator what dude use your hands that we got from asus definitely does have it's called a cpu installation tool never heard of that it makes it really useful if you want to install a core i7 hexacore cpu yeah we've got one yeah, we got one. It's almost everywhere in every single store, and it's available to purchase everywhere, even Amazon. Yep, we got one. And it's an 8th generation chip, and it's ready to go, and it supports overclocking. Don't overclock it, dude. So what having this little installer does for you is... And, uh, to clarify, you don't really need to overclock. Overclocking, you know, if you want to get that squeeze that last bit, you can do it, but overclocking, you don't really need to do. It's basically a brace that you can apply right to the CPU. Or you could just use your hands like a human. And light it up with the triangles that you'll see on the bottom left corner. Okay, for clarification, I'm not bullying this guy. I'm bullying whoever wrote this script. Whoever did this. Because obviously this guy, his name is Stefan. Stefan? You seem like a nice guy, Stefan. You seem like a really nice dude. It's just this company and whoever wrote this script is out of touch to say the least corners and this will make it easy every cpu cooler actually comes with a bit of thermal paste already mm, not everyone not every single one um i'd say only like a handful does that not everyone though but he does have points um 
some do do that. Uh, fuck off. Yeah, some do do that. Um, but yeah. Be neatly applied in a circle around it, but it's usually not enough. It's good, essentially PC building practice to have a little bit extra and. Uh, okay, first off, this application, you just need a dot in the middle. The reason why is because when you press down, this thing spreads. So if you do this, it might go over the edge and damage the motherboard, which you said you should never do. Um, just place it like in a circle in the middle, and you'll be fine. But um, this, uh, what he said was uh, extra, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take that extra. You don't need extra. A dot is perfect, more than enough, really. So you don't really need extra. You just need a good fair amount, which is a dot. Layer it on top of the CPU. The final portion is to add the CPU cooler to the top end of the processor. So you're gonna see that there are four brackets. What is that spread, mate? Oh my god, lad, that looks horrible. It's, or rather like screws in here with brackets and holders right here. And they're going to keep the cooler raised off the processor, but it's also going to be close enough to actually physically come in contact with it. Like, basically keep it cool. Take thumb screws like this, and just screw them on. Okay, yeah, like this. I can see, I can... Hold on. Like this. Like this. I can't see what you're doing, dude. And just screw them on. Yeah, I can't see what you're doing. So now that our internal... Oh my god! What is that cable management? Oh, also, he never mentioned it, but you need to actually, um, you need to put, plug your, um, GPU into the power supply. He never mentioned that. He never, he, he just said you need to look where you're going with the power supply, and he never showed you how to properly do it. Just putting that out there. Everything's put together, and we got to the post screen. Oh, so Jesus, that's actually impressive. So, um, settings, native resolution, which is 1080p HD, and it's running pretty smoothly. Like, Sheesh! Um, I'm averaging 70 and 80 FPS, and this is no- Jesus. Um, well, yeah, the reason why is because, first off, everything else is low res, and you have motion blur, which, uh, what's the word? When you have that, it helps with the FPS, because when it motions, everything drops quality, I, I think, if I remember correctly. That way, it allows higher FPS, which is why I turn off motion blur normally like a very intensive game to run and it's still doing a pretty good job so right now i'm playing league of legends it's one of my favorite games i'm actually let's go i don't know why you're playing league of legends but fair enough I'm actually playing against a bot and i'm distracted so i'm not actually doing so well but fair enough man i don't do well anyways um now i'm averaging yeah. 120 fps and that's only because i've actually locked the game why okay two things the first thing I never I never mentioned it because I didn't realize it. First off, League of Legends is specified so you can play it on like a Chromebook. If a Chromebook could have Steam, you could play it on that. I bet. Secondly, never lock your benchmarking. Why are you locking it then? Playing League on maximum settings, which is a little bit absurd, and you don't really need that, so I locked it. Why? If you, if you turned it off, you would be actually bench pressing. And secondly, I think the reason why you locked it at 120 is because your monitor isn't on 144 hertz. Gaming desktop has been a great experience. I'm able to max out a lot of- Not for this PC. One of my favorite titles. And I'll be able to play a lot of upcoming titles like Battlefield 5 and Cyberpunk 2077. No, you won't. <laughs> if there's one game you will never be able to play, that is Cyberpunk with this PC build, man. Without worrying too much about the parts I have, when Ray- Oh, you definitely need to. You you need like a 3090 when that game comes out. Well, when it came out. If racing GPUs come out, for example, I'll be able to upgrade without having to buy a completely new system. Yeah, you might want to, because you you put your you put your power supply backwards. You're going to need a new power supply. <laughs> Capital One, you should have probably pulled out with this one, man. Yeah, that was horrible. Um, that's it. See ya.